I've spent my life working with stats, but I'm still amazed by many of the practical applications of statistics. Take language, for instance. This is a field that at first glance doesn't seem to have very much to do with numbers at all. But at Google's California headquarters, computer scientists are overcoming the world's language barriers with statistical machine translation. We wanted to provide access to all the web's information, no matter what language you spoke. There's just so much information on the internet, you couldn't hope to translate it all by hand into every possible language. We figured we'd have to be able to do machine translation. What the computer is doing when, when he's learning how to translate is to learn correlations between words and correlations between phrases. So we, we, we feed the system very large amounts of data and then the system is seeing that uh, a certain word or a certain phrase correlates very often to the other language. Google's website currently offers translation between any of 57 different languages. It does this purely statistically, having correlated a huge collection of multilingual texts. The people that built the system don't need to know Chinese in order to build a Chinese to English system. They don't need to know Arabic. But the expertise that's needed is basically knowledge of statistics, knowledge of computer science, uh, knowledge of infrastructure to build those very large uh, computational systems that we are building for doing that. Okay, so then I'm going to invite... I hooked up with Google from my office in Stockholm to try the translator for myself. I will type some Swedish sentences. Okay. Okay, so it says Sweden's finance minister has a ponytail and a gold ring in your ear. So I guess it Almost probably means exactly in his ear. Correct. It's amazing. <laughs> he comes from the Conservative Party. That's the kind of Sweden we have today. And I will type one more sentence. He said some schöne in his same-sex partnerships has Stockholm's new bishop and his partners a three-year son. That's it's almost perfect. Unusual. At least one important thing, it's her. It's a lesbian partnership. Ah, okay, so, so that's uh, those kinds of words, his and her, are, are one of the challenges in, in translation to get really those right and in MT. when it comes to bishops, one can excuse it. Right, right. So, so that, I guess more often than not, it would probably be a his. I would write one more sentence. När Sverige deltar i Olympiader är målet inte att vinna utan att slå Norge. Okay. When Sweden is taking part in Olympic goal is not to win but to beat Norway. <laughs> yes, this is what it is. And uh, but they are very good in Winter Olympics, so we can't make it, but we are trying. Ah, oh, very good, very good. This is absolutely amazing, you know, and I was especially uh, impressed that it picked up words like same-sex partnerships, which are very new to the language. I, I'm if you think that's great, Google are now working on connecting this up with statistical voice recognition software. Now we have the capability of having instant conversation between two people that don't speak a common language that uh, I can talk to you in my language, you hear me in your language, and you can answer back, and in, in real time, we can make that translation, we can bring two people together and allow them to speak. To find out more about the joy of stats, visit the Open University's Open Learn website. <laughs>